This is a matter of the first importance, and for fear of any treachery, I propose that whoever undertakes this business without success, even though the failure arises only from an error of judgment, shall suffer death. Without waiting for the sentiments of his companions, one of the robbers started up and said, I submit to this condition, and think it an honor to expose my life to serve the troop. After this robber had received great commendations from the captain and his comrades, he disguised himself so that nobody would take him for what he was, and taking his leave of the troop that night, went into the town just at daybreak, and walked up and down, till accidentally he came to Baba Mustafa's stall, which was always open before any of the shops. Baba Mustafa was seated with an awl in his hand, just going to work. The robber saluted him, bidding him good morrow, and, perceiving that he was old, said, "'Honest man, you begin to work very early. Is it possible that one of your age can see so well? I question, even if it were somewhat lighter, whether you could see to stitch.' "'You do not know me?' replied Baba Mustafa, for, old as I am, I have extraordinary good eyes, and you will not doubt it when I tell you that I sewed the body of a dead man together, in a place where I had not so much light as I have now. A dead body, exclaimed the robber with affected amazement. Yes, yes, answered Baba Mustafa. I see you want to have me speak out, but you shall know no more. The robber felt sure that he had discovered what he sought. He pulled out a piece of gold, and putting it into Baba Mustafa's hand, said to him, I do not want to learn your secret, though I can assure you you might safely trust me with it. The only thing I desire of you is to show me the house where you stitched up the dead body. If... I were disposed to do you that favor, replied Baba Mustafa. I assure you, I cannot. I was taken to a certain place whence I was led blindfold to the house, and afterward brought back again in the same manner. You see, therefore, the impossibility of my doing what you desire. Well, replied the robber, you may, however, remember a little of the way that you were led blindfold. Come, let me blind your eyes at the same place. We will walk together. Perhaps you may recognize some part. And as everybody ought to be paid for their trouble, there is another piece of gold for you. Gratify me in what I ask you. So saying, he put another piece of gold into his hand. The two pieces of gold were great temptations to Baba Mustafa. He looked at them a long time in his hand without saying a word, but at last he pulled out his purse and put them in. "'I cannot promise,' said he to the robber, "'that I can remember the way exactly, but since you desire I will try what I can do.' At these words Baba Mustafa rose up to the great joy of the robber and led him to the place where Morgiana had bound his eyes. It was here, said Baba Mustafa. I was blindfolded, and I turned this way. The robber tied his handkerchief over his eyes and walked by him till he stopped directly at Cassim's house, where Ali Baba then lived. The thief, before he pulled off the band, marked the door with a piece of chalk, which he had ready in his hand, and then asked him if he knew whose house that was, to which Baba Mustafa replied that, as he did not live in the neighborhood, he could not tell. The robber, finding he could discover no more from Baba Mustafa, thanked him for the trouble he had taken and left him to go back to his stall, while he returned to the forest, persuaded that he should be very well received. A little after the robber and Baba Mustafa had parted, Morgiana went out of Ali Baba's house upon some errand, and upon her return— seeing the mark the robber had made, stopped to observe it. "'What can be the meaning of this mark?' she said to herself. "'Somebody intends my master no good. However, with whatever intention it was done, it is advisable to guard against the worst.' Accordingly, she fetched a piece of chalk, and marked two or three doors on each side in the same manner, 
without saying a word to her master or mistress. In the meantime the robber rejoined his troop in the forest, and recounted to them his success, expatiating upon his good fortune in meeting so soon with the only person who could inform him of what he wanted to know. All the robbers listened to him with the utmost satisfaction, when the captain, after commending his diligence, addressing himself to them all, said, "'Comrades, we have no time to lose. Let us set off well armed, without its appearing who we are, but that we may not excite any suspicion, let only one or two go into the town together, and join at our rendezvous, which shall be the great square. In the meantime, our comrade, who brought us the good news, and I, will go and find out the house, that we may consult what had best be done. This speech and plan was approved by all, and they were soon ready. They filed off in parties of two each, after some interval of time, and got into the town without being in the least suspected. The captain, and he who had visited the town in the morning as spy, came in the last. He led the captain into the street where he had marked Ali Baba's residence, and when they came to the first of the houses which Morgiana had marked, he pointed it out. But the captain observed that the next door was chalked in the same manner and in the same place, and showing it to his guide, asked him which house it was, that or the first. The guide was so confounded that he knew not what answer to make, but still more puzzled when he and the captain saw five or six houses similarly marked. He assured the captain with an oath that he had marked but one, and could not tell who had chalked the rest, so that he could not distinguish the house which the cobbler had stopped at. The History of Ali Baba and of the Forty Robbers Killed by One Slave by Arabian Nights Entertainment Part 2 The captain, finding that their design had proved abortive, went directly to the place of meeting, and told his troop that they had lost their labor and must return to their cave. He himself set the example, and they all returned as they had come. When the troop was all got together, the captain told them the reason of their returning, and presently the conductor was declared by all worthy of death. He condemned himself, acknowledging that he ought to have taken better precaution, and prepared to receive the stroke from him who was appointed to cut off his head. But as the safety of the troop required the discovery of the second intruder into the cave, another of the gang, who promised himself he should succeed better, presented himself, and his offer being accepted, he went and corrupted Baba Mustafa, as the other had done, and being shown the house, marked it in a place more remote from sight, with red chalk. Not long after, Morgiana, whose eyes nothing could escape, went out, and seeing the red chalk, and arguing with herself, as she had done before, marked the other neighbors' houses in the same place and manner. The robber, at his return to his company, valued himself much on the precaution he had taken, which he looked upon as an infallible way of distinguishing Ali Baba's house from the others, and the captain and all of them thought it must succeed. They conveyed themselves into the town with the same precaution as before, but when the robber and his captain came to the street they found the same difficulty, at which the captain was enraged and the robber in as great confusion as his predecessor. Thus the captain and his troop were forced to retire a second time, and much more dissatisfied, while the robber, who had been the author of the mistake, underwent the same punishment to which he willingly submitted. The captain, having lost two brave fellows of his troop, was afraid of diminishing it too much by pursuing this plan to get information of the residence of their plunderer, he found by their example that their heads were not so good as their hands on such occasions, and therefore resolved to take upon himself the important commission. Accordingly he went and addressed himself to Baba Mustafa, who did him the same service he had done to the other robbers. He did not set any particular mark on the house, but examined and observed it so carefully by passing often by it that it was impossible for him to mistake it. The captain, well satisfied with his attempt, and informed of what he wanted to know, returned to the forest, and when he came into the cave, where the troop waited for him, said, 
Now, comrades, nothing can prevent our full revenge, as I am certain of the house, and in my way hither I have thought how to put it into execution. But if any one can form a better expedient, let him communicate it. He then told them his contrivance, and, as they approved of it, ordered them to go into the villages about and buy nineteen mules with thirty-eight large leather jars, one full of oil, and the others empty. 